Today, International Development Minister, Prajit Sajjan, has announced a generous $71 million in humanitarian aid to Sudan and its neighboring countries. The funding that is set to flow to at least 14 different groups will provide food, water, and other health services to internally displaced people. Sajjan has said, the challenges are immense and they must not be faced alone. The situation is deteriorating and the Sudanese people still need our help. The funds are headed towards Sudan, South Sudan, and the Central African Republic. A large part of the funding will go towards the World Food Programme, Doctors Without Borders, and other organizations the minister has mentioned that the crisis began on April 15, where bands of paramilitary and military groups caused hissing fighting throughout the capital of Khartoum. This caused Western nations to send evacuations back to their countries of origin. As of now, two ships are stationed off of Sudan's coast to ensure the safety and security of any Canadians. Moreover, the UN has sent the humanitarian chief, Martin Griffiths, to Sudan currently and he is seeking clarified guarantees from the warring sides for safe and effective aid. Criticisms have been made that the UN and its agencies have lagged in responding to the crisis, in large part due to lacking funding and limited staff. The Minister for Diversity, Ahmed Hassan, has noted that Sudan has hosted a large number of refugees from other countries that have now been forced to flee again. One of the organizations receiving funds from the Canadian government is Save the Children Canada. The humanitarian head, Dalia Alawadi, stated, with the conflict bringing Khartoum to a stop, the limited supply of food and essentials is driving up prices for available commodities to two, three, or four times their market value. Additionally, the spokeswoman Anita Vandenbelt has mentioned that women will be instrumental in finding lasting solutions in the area. Vandenbelt claims that women are not just victims and are very strong in the region. Parliamentary Secretary Anita Vandenbelt has noted that aid workers put themselves at risk every day to ensure the safety of those in need and gain insight on how best to respond to the crisis. Vandenbelt has praised the bravery of aid workers and their ability to bring about real change in the region. Finally, the Canadian government has promised more funding for the region once Canadian officials visit the African Development Bank in Egypt and have talks with the African Union in Ethiopia. We thank the Canadian government and its people for showing generosity and compassion in a time of immense suffering and loss for countless people in Sudan and its surrounding countries. We hope that this grant be an impetus to bring about real, lasting change in Sudan.